Hercacy EX Sandler. Welcome back to Tom Plays Europa Universe Salis 4 for absolute beginners. We're back with the Ottomans and we're just gearing up to attack the Mamluks. Now I'm expecting a rebellion in Circassia. Oh, Man, you were expecting one in Greece as well. So I might just send this army up. Alania is the most likely place. Lani is there. Does anywhere nearby have a good supply limit? It doesn't, so let's go up to there. So what's the other one? Greek separatists in Agripos. Oh, I see. Necrofonte, Corfu, or the island of Rhodes. Right. Okay, well, I can move there at least. That'll put me in a better position. I do just want to speed on time a little so I can improve my manpower. However, actually, before I go much further, let's start fabricating claims on the Mamluks. So, Tadmor. Homs. I believe we already had one on Damask. Seda. start. I'm going to leave them going. I'm going to start improving relations with Karakunlu in the vain hope that they will actually join in this time. Has Lithuania died? Oh, not quite. Could I even vassalize them? Apparently I own their core provinces, so fine. Not a big issue, I have to admit I'm not convinced they're a great ally to have anymore. But hey, what can you do? So I'll improve relations with Bohemia instead. And I'm just going to watch the manpower and wait for rebels. Just for a bit. I would like to gain some manpower back. A new idea. Postal service, envoy travel time. Not very useful, but not a terrible thing either. Okay, Circassian separatists have risen up. Let's put them down. Let's also see about making some of these states cause. There we go. So once these guys have been put down, I'm going to move this army back down towards the Mamluks. Yeah, Halep's probably the best place to have an army. Nearby Ish. Our truce of Kazan has ended. So I'm waiting for a Greek uprising now, I believe. Uh, finished improving relations with Bohemia. Ooh. Unwise state right. I don't want a penalty to aggressive expansion. Certainly not at the moment because we're attacking everyone. So let's spend some diplomatic power. Now, diplomatic advisor that we've lost was one we were getting cheaper. We did have the old Sultana who apparently has also died. That's a shame. Okay. Okay, how much money do we have? 21.78. Have to say though, diplomatic advisors not as valuable as a rule. Might do trade efficiency at plus one. Greek separatists, Rhodes and Corfu. Well, that's just rude. Okay, let's get to Corfu first. And... How big is the Rhodian one? I really need more ships. <coughs> I 
not to worry. I'm going to take my 17 people that I have. And I'm hoping that's going to be enough. To be fair, we do... Do we have a castle? Or was that just because it was the knight's hometown? No, we do have a castle on roads. So I should actually... Oh, right, I can't land there. Or can I? Maybe I can. So, we have a two-star general. We have 17 troops. Yeah, we're fine. That is quite an advantage, to be fair. All these troops back out of roads. Now we have conquered, we've also sorted Corfu out, so we move back to Constantinople. We finally have no upcoming rebellions. So I would say that we're pretty much ready to take on the Mamluks. I grant you that we still have fairly low manpower. So we might have to see. What do we need? 40 to fabricate another claim. So we should be able to fabricate one more claim at least. So what do we take? I think Jaffa is our best option. Not too far down the coast. So I would think we would stop there. Is. What's a war against them actually going to be like? Once again, Karakion Lu is not willing to help us. However, they're only 290 in debt, so I can probably pull them in by paying their debts for them. However, on the other side, we've got Shamar, which is a vassal. Mamluks has become slightly more huge because they've absorbed another vassal. We've got Tlemcen, which isn't too bad. Sistan. Oh my goodness, what happened to Morocco? Well, I guess Portugal happened to Morocco, but good grief. <laughs> Just for anyone who isn't familiar with... Uh, well, yeah, of, often in Europe Universalis 4, Morocco will more or less take over this entire area. I think they start with like Marrakesh as a vassal and such like. They're quite a powerful country, so to see them having been actually wiped out is quite... A shock. Okay, so Sistan. Sistan I can't see. Marahan. Marahan's there, but we're not huge. So I'm hoping Sistan is very small. What have we got? Prasimir Marinov has corrupt connections. Okay. I think he's one of our... Oh, he's the trade guy that we just employed. Yeah. Get rid. I don't like corruption. So let's do morale of navies. Diplomatic reputation would be better. But it's a plus three and I'd rather get plus threes for our military and our administrative if possible. Okay. So I've still got this one ally. But I don't recognise Sistan, so let's do a find, which is the F key again. Oh, there we go, they're absolutely tiny. Okay, I think we can take them, especially if we have Karakionlu. So I am going to pay their debts off. and give subsidies instead. <sighs> Not paying attention. So basically you can just give other countries money if you want to. So they're 290 in debt and allegedly that's what's preventing them from entering the war on our side. So if I can give them 300, which I can easily afford, I now expect them to join in our war, which they are going to do. So let's do it. 
let's take down the Mamlox one more time. So this time, well, we're basically just hoping to get all of the lands we'd have claims on. Which is a fair few. Karakunlu, as you'll see, is a bit more militarily capable than our vassals. Let's see what I probably should have done. I'm going to move these guys close. To the Mamluks. What I probably should have done was looked into building extra troops and extra boats, extra boats especially, before this started. But never mind. I'm just going to see if I can take down some Mamlukian navies. You have to watch it sometimes. If Karakunlu took Tadmor because it's on their border, it might go down as being their claimed land. In which case, we wouldn't be able to get it. We could give it to Karakunlu, but we wouldn't be able to get it ourselves. Obviously, we have no intention of giving anything to Karakunlu, because this may well be the last time we have them as an ally. So I'm really hoping they get heavily involved in this war and severely damage themselves. It's a bit mean. But hey, this is like the first time they've ever joined in with a, a war. So we're definitely going to be interested in getting together with the Timurids after this. So I'm going to start improving relations. The problem we're going to have is that Karakunlu might end up making an alliance with the Mamluks once we split with them. We may have to face both of them. Okay, we've got to the Renunciationists again. Yes, let's expel them again. Getting quite used to these events now. Just randomly patrolling around. Okay, still no sign of any enemy armies. No way they can get to me, is there? I suppose they could go across here, but it's hard to imagine they'd be particularly friendly with the Europeans. And they can, of course, go around, but then they have to go through Karakionlu, and this time, that's a hostile land for them. So we should be in a better position to keep them contained. Quite heartened by the fact that their navies keep running away. Also, if you remember, I think the advice we went for gives us additional morale of navies. Okay, we have lost our philosopher. So, I am going to go for production efficiency with a plus three. I believe we should have the money to go with that, which we do. So that's good. It's all good. Just yet. Let's put up the speed slightly. Really could do with catching some of these navies. And we lost a general. She has never good news. I just want to batter their navies as much as I can while our siege is going on. And we can hopefully, hopefully, did they just land? Sp 
split up and start blockading the coast. So this is a blockade. So we should be causing them issues. Oh, right, so they've landed over there. So I'm going to move my whole navy here because they do have 17 ships. And that's all our military. Our idea, supply trains, reinforce speed, sounds good. Okay, so my ship's probably going to stay there now. The idea is that we will take this province, forcing them out. Hard to say how well it will work. So I'm hoping from now on any land that Karaki and Lu take will be counted as mine. Because it's on the border of land I've taken. We'll find out. I mean obviously it doesn't apply to Shamar. No, it might, because they still don't have a border. So hopefully Karakiyunli will start doing us an awful lot of good. But I do need this siege to end. And now they're all running away. To be fair, they may be planning to put down rebellions for me. But I can't actually see any. Hmm, Florence. Still, not a problem. to be attacking them anytime soon. Jaffa, and I'm going to bring my third army down now to hopefully prevent anyone in the Mamluks from getting past me. Yeah, I think they possibly are going to put down that rebellion, which is a bit unfortunate, because it's not really very useful at the moment. But never mind. Must also keep an eye on the Mamluks' allies. It's not Shamar because they're a vassal, but the other three, if they get fed up of combat at any point, we can hopefully get them to pull out of the war. <sighs> okay. Trebine. I just I'd like to convert to roads. We might have an uprising if we do. soon as they take Jaffa. I don't know if you can um, give them a general while they're in enemy territory. Okay, as soon as they take Jaffa and as soon as I have 50 military points again. There you go for the castle. General. I think that's right. Once again, going for three provinces simultaneously. I really think the Mamluk army needs to show up at some point. I'd also really like it if Karakiyundi. Where are you going? Still only at war against the Mamluks. So, why exactly they're heading east, I have no idea. Oh, they do have an ally down here, don't they? Sistan. Alright, fair enough. Maybe they're going to attack them. Saves me a job, I suppose. Have to keep an eye out for that particular ally wanting to pull out of the war. And as we're getting into the open, I'll have to keep an eye out for any Mamluk armies trying to sneak past. Of course, at some point we'll get a high enough war score that we can get the lands we want. You need to remember this. We're not out to crush the Mamluks completely in this war. All their allies. We're just out to get a high enough war score that they're willing to give us a very small part of their country. So the, and the more we can do it without having to compromise our armies, the better really. So who is this? 
Sistan. Okay. Looks like Karaki and we might be going to sort them out, which is good. That's what we want. Okay, so if you move there, I think maybe you move here and start attacking the west rather than the south. I think we've taken all the lands we have claims on now at least. I think they're all ones we have borders with. So probably these five, it probably is just the five. So I think on the coast we only went as far as Jaffa. No interesting piece as of yet. Okay. Start the siege. It's really the sieges that make all the difference in the end. Oh, Astrakhan's going to take them out. Thought they can actually do a siege without a few people. But nothing much I can do about it. Assistan isn't that important. Karaki and Lu have done something useful. Not that useful, but a little. That's good. But yeah, it's really when the castles fall that we're going to get the big boosts in war score. Whoop. Okay. Looks like my rulers died, which is unfortunate. So we're going to pay them. The Janissaries are very important. We've had a stability drop, unfortunately. And we have a new ruler. Doesn't have very good military stats. Good admin, though, which is good. I do like admin. And I think we should try to boost stability. I have to make decrees again. Let me just... Okay. Let's move him on there. National decisions. The announcement of sect practices, which is definitely good. And enforce religious unity, also good. Accept both of those policies. So now we just really need one of these castles to fall. Reforms. Treasurers are arguing we need to enact some reforms. I would say yes, we do. Fine with reforms, however, it has cost us stability again. We can't boost until we... well, probably until next month, to be honest. So it's not too bad. There we go. On the plus side, we're probably at our lowest ebb in terms of penalties for not having adopted colonialism. Okay, we're going to go straight for the next siege with them. So it doesn't matter that much if we're using the administrative power to to increase stability. Because we've got a 37% penalty here. <laughs> Worst one for military, to be fair. So yeah, what we need is for this to this institution to spread. At the moment we've got no possible chance of embracing it because it hasn't been fully embraced in any province. But we're getting very close with some of these. Which is good. So hopefully... We'll be making a start before you know it, but we will have to save some money up in order to afford it. So no more manufacturers for a bit. So it looks like Yanya's going to get it first. And they will then start spreading it to all of these provinces. Pretty nice to watch the institution spreading, I find. Okay. <laughs> I suppose it depends whether that kind of thing interests you. It feels like some sort of scientific simulation to me, like spread of a virus or something. Okay. Well, that was something bad then, but it isn't. It's just us making progress in the siege. Hopefully 
Hopefully once the siege is done with, we can start spreading out again. We have the end of influence ideas, marcher lords, so our vassals are going to start contributing much more to the size of the army we can field. We'll get a bonus to how many troops we're allowed to have ourselves based on our vassals, and that's going to increase. Okay. Okay, so we also, this is another thing that appears, we also get an option for new policies. We can have up to nine policies. The first one on the left is always free. So it's always worth getting that, if only temporarily. So we've got a little, a new little alert. Free policy available. So then we, to be honest, you just click on any of these. And we can see policies we're moving towards because we've completed influence ideas and we've completed administrative ideas but well, we have one policy we can get you need a fully completed idea train so we've completed influence ideas and administrative ideas and we have this vassal integration act so that we can announce as a policy and it will make it much easier for us to annex our vassals diplomatically so we might as well take it because it costs us nothing any following policies, so an administrative policy here, when we've already got this one, will cost us one administrative point per month. We do, of course, have quite a few to go at. But it's worth bearing that in mind. So that's because these are both full. We've also gained national ideas because of fulfilling our other idea groups. We've almost filled our national ideas in. So we should actually... <laughs> be considerably more powerful now. Okay, we got Janissaries. Increased influence of the Bektashi Order of the Sufis. Huh. That's fair enough. So we've got no choice here, this moves us a bit towards mysticism. I don't really mind, I do want to be quite tolerant. But this is again, it's an example of the amount of power that the Janissaries wield, which is amazing considering they're technically. I might just sweep up a few extra lands. Okay. They're technically the children of conquered Christians. But I believe they've been brought up to be Muslims, but it looks like they're a little on the unorthodox side. Which is, you know, fine. Out of interest, are the Mamluks interested in peace yet? They will give us three provinces. So they're not giving us Jaffa and they're not giving us Tadmor, so it's not good enough. Is anyone fed up of fighting? Just the Mamluks. So I'm guessing Sistan has not fallen yet. Oh, he just did. I'm guessing Sistan is now fed up with fighting, so maybe we can make peace with them. They will annul treaties and give us 10 ducats. It's not much, but it's something. And it's one less ally than the Mamluks have now. So I just take Rashid. Let's start moving south again. That's a desert, isn't it? That's not actually a province. Oh no, it is a province. Oops, fair enough. Should have taken that a while ago. I suppose I could actually take the capital of Shamar, but I'm actually hoping that I won't need to do too much more for the Mamluks to give us all our claims. So even as everything except Jaffa now, it's very, very nearly there. And I have to say that I mean, I suppose they've helped to put rebellions down, but I don't really feel like Karakionlu's done a lot. And honestly? Ah, excellent. I still haven't really been a very good ally. In all of this. On the plus side, I don't think we've really had to fight that much yet. It's about having lost quite a few troops. I 
wonder if we can give up as soon as this siege is over. This will also allow us to take down their navy. Should be good. Just have this somewhat battered army taking any lands that they can find. Oh, Karakion has come to join in. Yeah, whoever would have thought it. I have to wonder what happened to the Mammoths just before I attacked. Did they have like a major war or something? Because I haven't really seen much in the way of armies. We just seem to be able to just waltz in and walk all over them. I almost feel inclined just to keep on attacking. This was the only real benefit though, was that it would be that it would force them to give us more money. In the end, Maybe I'll carry on going down the coast. Now Karakion, they will take some of these lands. Oh, this is unacceptable again. How many times is this going to fire? But it gives me prestige, so I'm happy. Okay. I don't think Karakion loot, oh sorry, no guys onto a, onto much with this siege, but uh, at least it's happening independently of what I'm doing. Any of your allies fed up? No, nope, they're fine, but then to be fair, they haven't actually had to fight any battles. So I guess what I'll do is I'll have these sieges going and I'll just have this group constantly taking land. Until the sieges are over. Or at least until one of the sieges is over. seems odd to stop a conflict where it seems like there's nothing opposing us. I suppose I'm just worried that at some point suddenly some massive army is going to show up. And also the longer a conflict goes on the more sick your citizens become of it. I thought what I should probably be doing is splitting my army up, seeing as I don't seem to have any actual opponents to worry about. So I can take a few more lands. Karakion Lu's finally taking some lands. We have a new heir, we want to siege. They're being forced out to face my navy, which is absolutely destroying their navy. And they're about to be forced out again. It's very bad news for them. Okay, so we're doing pretty well now. I am sort of hoping this siege might end. I do feel we can do a little bit better if we just keep going until this siege is over. Take a bit more land. <laughs> Boats have been forced out again. Okay, we've got Influenza Quarantine, definitely Quarantine. Oop. Okay, spend it generously gives us 10 prestige. Put it in the treasury, it gives us not enough ducats to not be worth it. 
my boats along. So that when this province goes, they'll be forced out again. So I can basically keep crushing their navy. Taking more and more land from... Oh, here's an army. Okay, well, seeing as there's an army there, let's see if they will now give us everything. They will give us everything. Not giving us any money, though. Yeah, I might wait till the siege is finished. That army doesn't look like it's moving. Also, Clemson is... Oh! Oh, they're in, in a war with Marrakesh. Okay. They're not willing to make peace. Okay, I'll send them a white peace offer anyway. But they won't accept it, so fine. Boat's being forced out. So going to go and force this boat out. Pretty much by the numbers. Just need that siege to end. And then we'll make peace with the Mamluks, and we probably won't attack them for a while because I'm going to go after Karakayun though. There's the siege! Okay. And I think that should do it. So we got Damask, Homs, Seda, to sell everything we wanted. They're renouncing a claim. Still not giving us any money. Give us some money. How we mean? That'll do. Okay. Now do you want to just read this? Okay. So Janissaries should be made raised only through a sham. But Muslim-born men want to join. So we either enforce rules, which gives us better discipline, which is always good, or we get better reinforced costs. I would rather have the discipline. Sorry, enforcing the rules. And they've accepted our peace office offer. So, okay. So you can come to Halib. I want to send this group to Europe. And this army, which is more or less intact, I want to bring to here because we want to attack Mazandaran. Okay, need to call some provinces. All the ones we've just taken. Going to beach my navy again. So we might need to do a bit of recovering, actually. Having said that, I think I'm going to send you here, because I might need two armies to take on Mazandaran. So we're going to go for them almost immediately, even though it does put us at risk where aggressive expansion is concerned. It's assuming we still can't vassalize them. It's economic base again. Very annoying. That's the other thing. We'd probably better not break our alliance with Karakunlu until we're ready to attack them because we still need access through their lands. Might want to avoid any royal marriages with them from now on though. And I think that's it. So we're just going to be rebuilding and recovering and hopefully looking at taking these guys. But mostly recovering, we need to check our military once these cores are done. See if we can build more naval ships. And that should be it. It's just going to be a question of recovering from the war. That's good. Made some solid progress on the Mamluks there. Got some mercenaries. Don't tend to need them much at the moment. No problem there at all. Literally just going to have problems with lack of manpower. What is on our freebie? 
list. We need to demand diplomatic support, 1545, so we may as well ask for a contribution because there's plenty of time to recover. And we can raise additional levies. I think that's actually worth it, even though it makes them disloyal for a while. I think they'll recover before we need to ask for military help and should allow us to rebuild our armies a little faster. Where you think you're going? I wanted you there. Okay. So we're gonna get these guys in place and hopefully already. Hopefully we can just do a quick strike on Mazandarin next time. And we'll only be taking two provinces so it will be a quick strike. Karakyundu is an ally. Okay. That potentially changes everything. I don't think we're going to be attacking them. It's going to be Kazan instead, isn't it? However, in the meantime, I think that's <laughs> we've definitely gone over for today. Um, but pleased with the progress we've made. We should be preparing for some the usual bunch of uprisings and such like. Let's start building a spy network for Kazan. Slightly disappointed that Karakiyunlu have allied them. Maybe we should consider allying them ourselves in the hope that at some point in the future we might be able to vassalize them as our economic base increases. Should increase as we take more countries and call more countries, but we'll see. For now, I mean, that's looking pretty good. Looks like we have a new fort. It cost us a little bit more money. But yeah, looks good, so I think that's all for this time, and I will see you next time.